the next one uh, the next basic concept with respect to the measurement system is system response so as the name represent it is a response of a system right a response of a system means the ability of a system to transmit and present all the relevant information contained in the input signal and to exclude all others right that is called system response it is a response of a system for the input signal that is called system response right it's the ability of a system right it's the ability of a system to transmit and present all the related information which is contained in the input signal and to exclude all others that is called system response suppose if you take a good system suppose if you say the measurement system is having a good system response that means it is having a faithful output to the input values that means the output signal have the same phase relation as that of the input signal then you can call that system as a good having a good system response so that's what the uh, system response is about usually the <clears throat> measurement system should have good response right good response means it should be faithful to the input signal the output what it generate by the measurement system it should be faithful to the input signals right that is what the response is about the output signal have the same phase relation as that of the input signal then you can call it as it is a good system response having a good system response in this good system response whenever an input signal is being supplied or sent to a measurement system and whenever there is a change in the input signal that change in the input signal may not be immediately be responded as a output right suppose if you take the example over here in the right side the image the input signal there is an increase in a step of the input but here the output it won't generate immediately it require certain amount of time to respond to this input signal you can observe here right <clears throat> this can be considered as a lag or delay in the output signal right this delay or lag it can be considered as the natural inertia of the system and this lag or delay in the measurement system is considered as measurement lag right <clears throat> whenever input signal is being supplied and there is a change in the input signal it it won't able to respond to that immediate uh, supply of the input signal right it takes certain amount of time that delay or that lag it can be considered as the measurement lag this delay or the lag which is considered as measurement lag it is due to inertia natural inertia which is present in the measurement system right that natural inertia because of that natural inertia in the measurement system it may take a certain amount of time to produce the output signal to produce the response that can be considered as the rise time right you can observe here rise time it is defined as the time taken for the system to change from 5% to 95% of its final value that means it measures the speed of response of a measurement system and a short or minimum amount of right rise time is desirable 
because immediate change in the input signal the output won't able to generate in that amount of time itself it requires certain amount of time certain amount of delay and that delay or the time what it taken will be the rise time and the lag what it going to generate it is called measurement lag it is because of natural inertia present in the measurement system right <clears throat> you can observe here the example of the inertia which can be present in the system suppose if you take an object of mass m right a frictionless mass m of an object so in order to produce an acceleration right in order to produce an acceleration a to the right then the magnitude of the force which is applied will be equal to m into a mass into acceleration see the force on this mass right the force on this mass acts in the direction in which the mass is required to accelerate that is to the right side this object of mass m which will be moving in this direction the force on this mass will act in that direction not to move this in the right side direction but here the mass however applies an inertia force this mass m will apply an inertia force also which is having the magnitude of ma you can observe in this image inertia force ma to so mass into acceleration which is acting in which direction it is acting it is acting in the reverse or opposite direction for the acceleration of the mass the acceleration of this mass m is moving in the right side direction whereas the inertia is moving in the opposite direction and the effect of this inertia is therefore to oppose opposite for any change taking place in the system there there will be a natural inertia which will oppose the movement or the force which is been accelerated in that direction in the opposite direction right so in measurement system also the output has to overcome this inertia in the measurement system also it has to overcome this inertia then only it can able to generate the output signal for that reason in order to overcome that inertia it require certain amount of delay of time that lag is called as measurement lag right however may be the fast response of the system always it take little bit of time to generate the output signal so that is what it is shown in this image as a example for this object to move for this object to accelerate in the right side direction it has to overcome the inertia forces which is of equal magnitude then only the object can able to move and that uh, object what it can able to move it is above the inertia force that means it is taking a certain amount of uh, delay that delay is also uh, also present in the measuring system so that is what the measurement lag time you can observe in the cursor right from 5 to 95% there is a gradual increase in the output even though the input you can observe here it is in the form of a step directly changes as the time passes it see that this is the time it is in the x axis this is the input it, it won't take any time for the input signal to jump from this point to this point but whereas in the output you can observe here it take the amount of time here from nearly 95 to 95 percent this time is considered as the rise time right the time taken for the system to change from 5 to 95 percent to its final value 
that is it is a measure of the speed of response of a measuring system and always this uh, in order to call it as a good system response for the measurement system always a shorter race time is desirable it is not that it, it, will, it will take a number of the time limit will be more whenever input signal is given you have to wait for a couple of minutes to get the output then it is considered as bad system response if it has to be a good system response it has to take the least possible time to generate the output signal for the given input that is called system response right see here in the in the figure response to a step input showing measurement lag there is a lag in the system and this lag the least is the uh, good one you know to call it as a good system response this is the another concept of the measurement system system response the next concept it is about the amplitude response amplitude response see system is said to be have a good amplitude response if we treat all the input amplitude equally and uniformly you can observe here i bolded it in order to make the system the measurement system to have a good amplitude response if the system is going to treat all the input amplitudes equally and uniformly suppose if you take the example if a input amplitude is of 5 units and it is indicated as 20 units on the output side for 5 units 20 units similarly if the input is in the 10 units it should give 40 units it is equally and uniformly treat all the input amplitudes equally and uniformly whether it is 5 unit or it can be 10 unit it has to treat equally 5 will be 20 units 10 will be it will be 40 units as a output right that is what the amplitude response is about you can observe here right in this image this is the example See here a three stage amplifier used for strain measurement has a good response up to an input voltage of 10 power minus 2 volt right you can observe here this is the input voltage and this is the the gain what you can able to expect right see till this point 10 power minus 2 it is showing having the good amplitude response then it going to decline you can observe the second point here see practically it may not be possible to have this type of amplitude response for a long range right practically it may not be possible to have this type of response amplitude response for a long range for the input that is if it is 5 units it is indicating as 20 then 10 should be indicating as 40 unit like this type of response it may not be possible practically for a long range so it is desired for the for over a specified range of input amplitude so practically if it is not feasible it is not possible so at least for a range of input amplitude the ratio of output amplitude or the input amplitude should remain at least constant you can observe here in this image till this point it will remain the same amplitude response right till 10 power minus 2 later it will be declined that means the response is get declined because practically it may not be possible to have the amplitude response for a longer range is a three stage amplifier used for strain measurement so all of you know that one is the strain measurement i discussed about in the last class about the strain measurement you can you know this one right 
strain the strain gauge right this will be the strain gauge whenever the object to which you are interested to measure the deformation that is the strain for that object the strain gauge will be pasted like this it will be pasted and this is what what you can able to see over here in the image this is what the amplifier so amplifier uh, you can condition considered as the signal conditioner it will amplifies it will magnifies the signal like in the like uh, in the speaker will be the magnifier for the uh, a music system likewise here this is the amplifier and here for the example you can observe here a three stage amplifier for strain measurement has a good response up to an input voltage of 10 power minus 2 volts because practically it is not possible up to certain range it going to have the good response and this is example of this three stage amplifier so all of you know this one right this is the strain gauge right and these are the led and these are the connections you can observe here this image what you can see over here you see the cursor it is this strain gauge and whichever the object or the bar to which you want to observe the or you want to measure Train gauge, and here that example is shown a three stage amplifier used for strain measurement. So, this is the amplifier for strain measurement as a good response till this certain range. Right? So, this is another concept amplitude response. We treat all the input amplitudes equally and uniformly, but up to certain range. But practically, it is not possible for the entire range. That is what it is shown in this image. Right? So I hope you understood this amplitude response. So this image is a strain gauge. It is connected to the amplifier. <coughs> the amplitude response is a ratio of output amplitude to input. Usually, a function of frequency. Output amplitude to input. You can observe here gain output voltage by input voltage. Next concept will be the frequency response. Frequency response. The, a measurement system is said to have a good frequency response when it treats all. Hello. When it treat all input frequencies with equal faithfulness when it treat all frequencies with equal faithfulness the previous one is treat all the input amplitudes equally and uniformly whereas in this one frequency response a system is said to have a good frequency response when you treat all input frequencies with equal faithfulness whatever the input signal which is being supplied to the measurement system it should treat with the equal faithfulness see for example here if an input amplitude of 5 unit at 60 cycle per second as 10 units of an output side then irrespective of a change in the input frequency the output amplitude should not change as long as the input amplitude does not change it the reason means it is faithful to the input frequencies so in practice a measurement system will have a lower and upper limits can observe the dotted line in this image 
right this is upper and the lower limit in practice a measuring system will have these upper and lower limits beyond which the system cannot have a good frequency response that means this is again the range within that range it can respond well good enough treat all the input with the equal faithfulness beyond that it won't able to generate the response to that level of the faithfulness here this figure shows the response curve of a device which has a good frequency response between 5 cycle per second right here this is 5 cycle per second to 30000 cycle per second this is frequency response for the three stage amplifier used for strain measurement so this is the three stage amplifier used for strain measurement for that this is amplitude response and this will be the frequency response to treat all the input frequencies to equal faithfulness that is what the frequency response is about the next concept 24th is phase response so if you take the amplitude response frequency response these are all uh, it will take all type of input signals that is simple or complex input signals you can observe here these are the the simple amplitudes complex amplitudes you can observe in this image this sine wave it is a simple right simple signal input signal whereas this one it is having the complex like triangular square right uh, different input signals here the amplitude response and the frequency response what we discuss these are important for all types of input signal that means simple to complex it can able to consider whereas this phase response what we are discussing it is for those it is important only for the complex waves if the input signal if the input signal is simple like a sine wave for a measuring system if the input signal is simple like this sine wave the amplitude of the output throughout of the phase with the input will not be get affected because the shape of this is repetitive and does not change between the limits of the cycle that is the simple whereas complex it is reverse right? so what the image what you can able to see over here this is the effect of poor phase response on recording the the strain for the member to which the strain gauge is being attached effect of poor phase response in signal processing in processing the input signals you can observe here phase response is the relation between the phase of the sinusoidal input and the output signal passing through any device that accept the input and produces the output like an amplifier it accept the input and produce an output or a filter there is what phase response the last one is delay or you can consider as the rise time see here delay or rise time this is another form of frequency response when a system is subjected to pulse type of input if a measurement system will consider the input in the form of pulses a sudden change in the input may not be able to sense instantaneously by the system it require some time before which it can indicate the actual 
change in the input signal right so that is called the the delay or you can consider as the rise time which is represented by this delta t so response of a typical system to a pulse type of input here step increase in it here it take this amount of time there is the delay delta t in order to uh, represent the input signal not to show the for the respond to the input signal in the form of output right but it can't be sensed instantaneously all of a sudden it can't able to change it require some fraction of seconds in order to change for the change in the input signal in the output values that delay or that uh, time is considered to be as the rise time it will be there practically in the measuring instruments some delay fraction of seconds will be there right because it instantaneously it can't generate the output signal all of a sudden for the given input value so this is what the delay or the rise time so next topic will be errors in measurement as you all know that one the error right usually in the uh, measurement measuring instruments or measurement you always concentrate on getting the uh, while calibrating the instruments you you go to check for the error right that means a difference between the measured value and the true value what is actually the value which you are obtaining and what is actually the the true value so that difference is considered as the error the no measurement can be made without the errors all the times 100% accurate measurement cannot be made some sort of error some sort of variation it will be there right error the difference between the true value and the measured value there some definitions of the error it is defined as a difference between the measured value and the true value of the quantity there is the one definition another definition it can be a mistake or inaccuracy in action or speech or a typical error another thing a incorrect belief or a wrong judgment it is also a definition of error deviation from the standard so usually in the calibration you will want to compare the performance of one with the standard you are actually um, calculating or measuring the deviation from the standard that is also a definition of an error another definition can be measure of the difference between some quantity and an approximation to or estimated of it often it will be expressed in percentage the difference between the true value of a measurement and value obtained during the measurement process that difference is also considered as an error so these are some of the definitions of error during the measurement so next topic it will be classification of errors you can observe here generally the errors it can be classified into three types systematic random illegitimate <coughs> the systematic error it can also be considered as a fixed error systematic or fixed error as the name represent systematic it will be there these are repetitive in nature and it will have the fixed values for it that's what is also called fixed errors systematic errors or it is also called fixed errors these are actually harmful in nature harmful in the sense harmful to get the accurate values from the measuring instruments these type of errors is uh, like harmful to the nature 
unless and until these errors are observed these errors are deliberately will be searched it won't be observed deliberately in the measuring instrument if it won't be search for it these type of fixed errors until unless you won't search for it it won't generate the or it won't able to observe the presence of these errors that's why it is called fixed error it is having fixed value in the instrument itself systematic error these are harmful in uh, harmful in nature these are recurring repetitive in nature each time it will occur reoccur again and again during the measurement will be taken these will have the definite magnitude and also this will have in the different direction in one direction always it going to provide the, the errors until unless deliberately it is searched out it won't be able to observe that type of error is called as systematic error or fixed error these have definite magnitude and direction systematic error right see here this is one type of systematic error what you are observing on the screen this is a type of systematic error right you can observe here this and this in between these two the measuring instrument which is correct is the option a the first one as compared to the second one here in this measuring instrument we are checking for the zero error in that zero error this is correct it is aligning with the zero of the measuring instrument whereas here without any physical parameter without any doing any measuring process uh, at the beginning itself it will going to have some sort of value already it is been showing it is not zero around minus 0.2 seconds right this is the initial error if this type of error zero error until unless deliberately searched for it it won't be observed always it will be there this zero error say for example minus 0.2 second it the magnitude of this error it will be having constant right it is having different magnitude and also in the different direction that's what is called systematic error or fixed error it is like a constant this type of error the systematic error may arises because of the imperfection in the operators what you are doing right what you are using for the measuring purpose for the measuring process if the measuring instrument if it is having the imperfections then it is known as the systematic error or fixed error these are harmful in nature it will be having reoccurring uh, recurring nature consistently in very time while doing the measurement values the reason of this type of error it can be the calibration error you can observe here in that systematic or fixed error it will be the calibration error right see here if you observe this example if this particular measuring instrument if it is as if it has been calibrated then this type of error it won't exist because calibration is checking the performance of this measuring instrument with that of the some standard while comparing that if you found any variations you have to correct it that is what the calibration is because of the lack of calibration or incorrect calibration in this instrument this error has been occurred that calibration can be called as calibration errors right for that reason uh, in the organization <coughs> or wherever measuring instrument will be used periodic calibration will be done because over a period of time the measuring instrument tend to deviate from the 
the actual values we tend to produce the errors <coughs> because of the frequent usage of the measuring instrument it or the frequent aging of the measuring instrument it won't able to generate the same values there will be some like, error it may able to happen in order to avoid that calibration will be done for it for the measuring instrument periodic calibration is required so in this systematic error or fixed error the subclassification is calibration error until unless it is de deliberately search for it it will be present like a constant value constant error always and it will reoccur <coughs> consistently each time the measurement is done that is the first one calibration error the second subclassification under this fixed error certain type of consistently recurring human errors right human errors you can observe this type of human error it is also there here you can observe here on the screen it is also there in the random errors human errors it can be systematic error or it can be even random error or accidental errors the human errors means see measuring a particular physical quantity varies from 1% to 1% 1% may feel that a particular measurement what he is measuring with some standard value is of some quantity but other person using the same measuring instrument for the same physical quantity he may get another reading or even the same person if you are doing the measuring for the same physical parameter say for example length measuring the length with respect to the some standard say for example the ruler scale while comparing that he may get different values right this variation may be because of the physical state or mental state of the human being right so because of this type of error it can be both systematic error or it can be random error or accidental error you can observe here the human error certain type of human error it is also here it is also here right human errors sometimes this human error it is systematic fixed sometimes this type of human error it will be random accidentally depending on the condition of the measuring instrument if the condition of measuring system is poor then that human error will become systematic fixed if it not if the person himself is doing uh, any mistake while doing the measurement then it will become random error certain type of human errors okay. when it come to the errors of technique the third sub -class classification of this systematic error errors of technique so as the name represent if the errors will be there in the technique itself technique means the the proper usage of the measuring operators if the proper usage of the measuring operators is not been done then it may lead to the error this type of error can be considered to be as the illegitimate error you can observe here in third one illegitimate error this type of error errors of technique it can be considered as illegitimate error also that is the blunder or mistake because the person or the operator one who is using the measuring instrument is not following the the proper technique or he is not using the operators properly improper usage of the measuring instrument lead to an error in the value that error it can be considered as also illegitimate error right errors of technique then uncorrected loading errors the loading error means uh, it result from the influence 
exerted during the measurement on the physical system which is being measured so a measurement process inevitably alters the characteristics of both the source of the measuring quantity and the measurement system itself that is called the loading errors uncorrected loading errors if it is be not been corrected it will be having the fixed values fixed errors reoccurring each time that's why this also comes under this systematic errors uncorrected loading errors then limit in the resolution of the system if the resolution of the system itself is having the limit then it may lead to the uh, error it won't able to measure to that uh, accuracy which is required there is also these are some of the systematic errors or you can consider as the fixed error right so systematic errors coming to the second one random errors or accidental errors so as the name represent accidentally right as compared to the systematic one systematic errors are it is harmful in nature because it will be present but whereas the second one it is random or accidentally the variation may happen during the measurement those called random errors so this is systematic error you see over here random errors as the name implies random that is it is inconsistent that means it won't having the same magnitude each time as compared to the systematic error the random error it is these are inconsistent randomly occurring right the, the disturbances which is occurring during the experiment is the measurement which is known as the random errors these type of error even if you remove the systematic error or fixed error these type of error random error it will be there in the measurement measuring instruments these type of error it will be there even though if you remove the systematic error or fixed error these type of errors will exist and these type of error will exist in the both the directions right random error can observe here the example the vernier caliper if you want to you are using that to make the measurement they may do the mistakes right even it can be the mistake by the human error or maybe because of the uh, variations or maybe because of the environmental conditions environmental variations or maybe it is insensitive the instrument itself it may be insensitive or having insufficient sensitiveness for the measurement system the random error may occur random error it means not being careful enough while taking the reading if the operator is not being careful enough or not reading the numbers properly these type of error considered to be as the random these are inconsistent as compared to the systematic one right you can observe here in the random error some person may read it as 25 some person may read it as 26 it depends on the position of the operator the viewer right that i will tell you again in the another slide about this this presence of these random errors is determined only when different readings are obtained in the measuring system or measuring instrument if you want to know that error random error is present how to know that one by making the different measurements of the same quantity under the same condition then only you can able to 
So usually you might have done the same thing in the triple M lab also by using the measuring instrument. Uh, one student, one person has get the reading for the same condition for the same quantity measured quantity using the same measuring instrument. Again, you might have checked for the confirmation purpose. That again and again, what you are checking is to check the random error. Because in a one go, if you check, there may be chances that uh, the reading may go uh, having the error, the variations. Right? Now to avoid that, not to know that the random error is there, <coughs> different readings are obtained for the for a measurement of the same quantity under same condition. So that is what random errors is about. Right? You can see here random error or accidental errors. Right? That means you can call it as unintentionally the error may go to happen randomly random errors inconsistent one see the first and that error stemming from environmental variation certain type of human errors errors result due to variation in definition about the measuring instrument the fourth one error derived from insufficient sensitivity of measuring system maybe these for these type of errors this random error or accident error, error may exist right i'll come to this later illegitimate error before that uh, the systematic and random error systematic error random error See here the errors generally it will classified as systematic and random error See systematic error, or you can call it as a fixed error, the causes of it, zero error. You observed here, right? The example, zero error. Systematic error, the cause of the systematic error, one of the is zero error, which is present in the measuring instrument itself. Having a defined, definite magnitude and the direction, right? Zero error. Here, the error caused by zero error is reduced by subtracting the obtained reading from the zero error. The initial error or the zero error, those things, in order to reduce that error, you're going to subtract that value. Once you get the value from the measuring instrument, you're going to subtract it. So whatever the initial error will be there or zero error will be there, it will be eliminated. So some accurate value you can able to expect from that instrument so that is what the systematic error cause of the systematic error <coughs> here another cause will be incorrect calibration if the measuring instrument would have been calibrated properly then that zero error may may would not been arranged because of that variation because of that incorrectness cause the systematic error may occur. I hope all of you are understanding right. Systematic error. Here, the method of minimizing by improving the structure of operators. Systematic error or fixed error. Another type of error what we discuss is random error. The random error or it is also called as accidental errors. It is inconsistent the causes of it parallax error right causes of this random error you can observe here one person may judge this particular quantity with the measuring instrument as 25 another person may judge it as 26 so which one is correct depending on the position how the person has read the particular physical parameter physical variable right parallax error right usually this type of error it will going to exist in the line standards you can observe here parallax error always this type of error will be there in the line standard if this is the measuring jar which is having the line the engravings if the operator has to take the reading based on these engravings 
it may be going to have the variation in the values depending on the position of the waving the angle of view right parallax error that is again another cause is incorrectly using the operators incorrectly using the operators so the operators is having a proper uh, it can able to produce a result properly but if it is been handling improperly or incorrectly it may lead to random error human error the minimizing method is by repetitive taking the readings repetitively if you take the reading of the same quantity and the same condition you may reduce the, the random error because these are randomly occurred inconsistent so now comes the third one illegitimate error i hope all of you understood this systematic error random error now the comes the third one illegitimate errors these type of error illegitimate error <coughs> as the name represent illegitimate it means it should not exist as compared to these two these type of error should not exist at all illegitimate right these type, these include the mistakes or the blunder which the person may able to do it during the measurement this type of error can be eliminated illegitimate error the blunder or mistake can be eliminated if the by having the uh, the careful exercises right in the blunder mistake computational errors calculation errors these are all the mistakes one more is there chaotic errors these chaotic error means the random disturbances chaotic errors the disturbances which will takes place randomly during the measurement process it is called chaotic errors that means the extreme vibrations or mechanical shocks of the equipments or the noise in the instrument will lead to an error those are chaotic error which comes under illegitimate errors these should not exist at all in the measurement system chaotic errors if the values Uh, what the measuring instrument is going to produce if during the testing if it is meaningless at analysis in such cases the test should be stopped the measurement should should be stopped unless and until those disturbances in the measuring instrument are eliminated because this type of error it should not exist illegitimate errors so these are the classification of errors see the complete elimination of both the error both the error means the systematic error and the random error cannot be possible complete elimination of these two errors is not possible whereas the third one the illegitimate error it is possible by careful analysis the error can only be reduced by using the particular method random error systematic error cannot be completely eliminated but it can be reduced by using the suitable methods for it for random error it can be reduced by repetitively taking the readings the random error during the measurement can be reduced by making the repetitive measurements this is the one way of uh, solving the error solution for the uh, reducing the error random error for systematic error it can be reduced by improving the mechanical structure of the operators so that is about the errors classification of errors right i hope all of you understood this
next topic is source of errors source of error means in order to generate these errors what are the sources from where it actually going to occur these errors so there are seven source of errors noise design limitations response time deterioration of measuring system environmental effects errors in observation and interpretation poor maintenance of the system noise noise means during the during taking the input signal for the measuring instrument the input signal those input signal which does, does not produce any information those are considered as the noise disturbances right there is a one source of error again the second one is design limitation design limitation means if it is having the any friction or the resolving power which lead to uncertainty in the measuring instrument itself there is the design limitation third is the response time as we discussed response time means a time lag between the input and the output measurement and is a, that is another uh, source the fourth is deterioration of measuring system deterioration means a physical deterioration or maybe chemical deterioration or any other alterations in the measuring system will contribute a error and this acts as the another source of it deterioration fifth one is environmental effect the change in the temperature atmospheric temperature may alter the the components in the measuring instrument like the spring the dimension of the linkages the resistance of the instruments because of that it may lead to error the sixth one is error in the observation and interpretation it is a mistake from by the operator while doing the uh, uh, while taking the readings or interpreting the values or recording the data it is another source the seventh one is maintenance poor maintenance of the system it is not being maintained well enough it also lead to the errors so these are the sources of errors